I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. So I just got punched in the face walking home. So last week I was assaulted in New York City, as you can kind of see here with my black eye. I was punched in the head uh, in New York City. What in the world is happening in New York City? As it's not random TikTokers being attacked, but specifically white women. And how did they defund the police protesters popping open pig pinatas, chanting, Abolish the police! It's armed. Abolish the police! Quickly turned into, Where's the NYPD? Oh my god! Because they first tried to blame the girls for their victimhood, because they weren't constantly in a kung fu stance while walking the streets. I was just walking on the sidewalk and my head was down. I was like looking at my phone, just sending an email, but I think he just was really mad that my head was down. He was walking a dog. So he took it upon himself to body check me and let me know to be conscious of my surroundings. And I was looking down and I was looking at my phone and like texting. And then out of nowhere, this man just came up and hit me in the face. As apparently it didn't even matter for some of them. I was on my way to work and it was probably 10 a.m. And as I was crossing the street, a man looked at me and within a split second, pointed two fingers at me in a gun symbol and then slammed a bag, plastic bag full of God knows what down on my face from about a foot away. With that being said, I couldn't have done anything to prevent this. I was so aware of my surroundings. I was in one of the most densely populated areas of New York. There was 50 plus people around me and I couldn't have done something if I tried. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. He goes, sorry, and then punches me in the head. Holy and although TikTok replies were quick to ask why they were vague about who exactly their attackers were, I don't remember what he looked like. It happened so quick. These girls actually seem to be pretty open about describing their ethnicity and how it's not the same guy, but a similar guy. The man that hit me was a black male, definitely over six feet tall. He had dreads that like didn't quite go to his shoulder, definitely looked unhoused. I have been able to identify that this man is the same as who hit a couple other girls, but what's even scarier is like there's a lot of girls and our descriptions of this man are completely different, meaning this like there's multiple men going around and doing this. And even actually sharing footage of them. I ended up taking a video. <laughs> Posting up their police wanted posters with information on who to contact to help get them arrested because the damage to the girls is very real. Maybe just in case I have a concussion or something. Luckily, I just got a concussion and this bruise has gotten much better in the past week. We officially have a concussion, a black eye, and a chipped tooth. But what's infuriating is how the NYPD tries to juke the crime rates by discouraging police reporting. I did talk to a police officer and kind of bummed out about that in hindsight because I wanted to file a report, but he told me, he was really nice, honestly, but he told me that the two options were either get in his car and we drive around and try to go find this man and arrest him. And at that point, like, I was uncontrollably sobbing and I didn't want to do that. I also had no clue where this man just went and I didn't want to just like endlessly drive around. Um, the second option was file a report, but he told me if we did that, he would have to call an ambulance to check me out. And I straight up said, I can't pay for an ambulance. Like I am a broke fashion student. Um, that's not an option for me. And he was like, well, that's it. I've since learned from TikTok that that was not true and I can still file a report without having an ambulance call. Reclassifying crimes to simple harassment instead of the actual assault and battery that took place. When I filed the police report, um, but basically he was saying that since it was her a harassment report, they don't usually investigate it, but since similar things have been happening over and over again, they're opening an investigation. And even when they do make the arrest, they immediately set them free. So I got the news that they did arrest him and find him, and I was ecstatic. Then I found out that at his arraignment for assault, he was let go with zero bail to go back out in the streets until his trial. This man is dangerous, he's mentally ill, and he's just roaming around on the streets right now for to hurt anyone. 
which the revolving door of New York City's justice system is already having dire consequences. And nothing turns a bleeding heart liberal into a die hard conservative faster than being the victim of your own political beliefs. Because I genuinely feel sorry for every one of those girls, even if they marched in every BLM, abolished a police rally, and mailed in ballots for every blue policy that destroyed their city. Not because I don't blame people for getting exactly what they voted for, but because no one is coming to save them. As a common theme we've seen recently is low information voters being tricked into thinking safety is the default setting of nature, when in fact, weak vulnerable women being able to carelessly go about their day in a city full of predators is the most unnatural thing to happen in reality. And I don't call them weak and vulnerable to be mean, I just mean I don't subscribe to what Marvel movies are teaching you to believe about the average woman's ability to fight off the average male criminal. That's why I strongly believe that two-way rights are women's rights because I don't live in the delusion that simultaneously disarming the innocent while coddling the criminals is going to result in anything other than third world levels of crime. Case in point, with New York City, subway crimes are skyrocketing. The former NYPD captain turned mayor tries to ignore it. In shootings in 2023 and double digit decreases in subway crime in February 2024, because I heard you say that it's up in February, it's actually down. While suspiciously also deploying our military into those same allegedly safe subways. Then the citizens protest the police presence inside their transit system. Out of the subway! Out of the not to mention arrest any civilians that would dare protect subway passengers. Which coincidentally, this article links back to the NYPD officer that lost his life, as his murderer had 21 previous arrests, including a gun charge that he was quickly released from. As equally liberal Illinois is also having their own issues with soft on crime policies having dire consequences for their children. Which honestly isn't surprising, as this was always their movement's mission. <laughs> And anybody that just went along with this isn't so much stupid as they are naive. So many of these abolish the police people have absolutely zero understanding of what it is to live in the state of lawlessness. As I personally move from the dumpster fire that is deep blue Los Angeles to a quiet little college town that actually has a very proactive police department. And some of my new neighbors have the audacity to complain that when the local coppers find and arrest an actual Chilean home burglary crew from basically a didn't match their surroundings traffic stop, the locals here are naive enough to question if that was enough probable cause, and is this possible police overreach? Bending over backwards to stand up for the poor migrant gang that can no longer bust down your door with ARs and Wi-Fi jammers. All because they simply can't fathom the idea of personally being the victim, as they've had it too good for too long. And just like these women in New York City, they won't realize the error of their ways until they're face down and concussed in the gutter, wondering why they're paying first world prices for third world living. So if you appreciate my concise, light order commentary on the tragic status that is today's reality, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then go check out the video on how Thailand doesn't have time for American unemployed behavior.